You can really go down a deep rabbit hole if you read the Bad Ice Ages. A team of researchers, including Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb, may have just found a trace of an interstellar object in the ocean, which Loeb believes could have alien origin. So a new discovery in Antarctica. Researchers find new life under an ice shelf, and the discovery was an accident. And that's where they say Eisenhower made a deal with these aliens. The most remote and hostile continent on Earth, Antarctica is cloaked not only in ice, but also in mystery. This icy border is more than just a desolate wasteland. It's a hidden treasure trove that has the power to alter the course of human history and the balance of power in international affairs. Under its icy exterior, Antarctica conceals mysteries so perplexing they seem like they belong in science fiction. Regarding UFO encounters, evasive extraterrestrial installations, and inexplicable occurrences, reliable sources have broken through this curtain of secrecy and provided us with hints about the unknown. Come us as we explore these spine-tingling mysteries where you'll feel more than just the chills. Prepare to uncover the hidden truths of Antarctica, where the stories waiting to be told are as vast and deep as the ice itself. Brian was a veteran U.S. naval flight engineer who flew over the harsh and enigmatic terrain of Antarctica for 4,000 hours over his long career that spanned the 1980s and 90s. His normal sorties across the cold continent of surveillance and resupply were largely unremarkable until one unusual flight completely changed his perspective on what was possible. Brian saw something genuinely unusual during one of these routine flights, a large, precisely circular hole chiseled into the Antarctic ice sheet. This was no typical geological feature. It was too exact and symmetrical to be a natural occurrence. The circle's edge was precisely defined, as though it had been cut with a laser, and it descended to what looked like the entrance to a bright cave. Not only was the glow coming from within unsettling, but it was also strange, throwing an odd light that seemed to be calling from the depths. When they got closer to the location of the luminous cave opening they had found earlier, their planes started to have unheard of technical issues. The communication equipment stalled into static. Navigation systems lost their bearings and instruments flickered and went crazy. Rapid escalation of the situation pushed the crew into a risky emergency protocol. Because of his vast flying experience, Brian was able to start the aircraft systems on emergency something that is normally not done in mid-air unless there are extremely dangerous conditions. Although this maneuver posed a risk, it was the sole means of recovering control of the aircraft. Amazingly, the restart process worked, and they were able to stabilize the plane and get away from the scene, which promptly led to the instrumentation working again. But the aircraft's safe recovery was not the end of the incident. When Brian and his team arrived back to McMurdo Station, they were surrounded by a cloak-and-dagger aftermath. As soon as they reported the event and described the technical difficulties around the ice cave, some anonymous officials showed up at the station. Brian referred to these people as shady authorities, meaning they weren't your typical government or military employees. Their hurry and manner betrayed a greater degree of power and secrecy. All flight records, including communications, logs, and navigational data, were seized by these officers. They conducted one-on-one -on -one interviews with every crew member, stressing the importance of maintaining complete confidentiality about what they had seen. The consequences were obvious. What had been seen and felt close to the glowing cave was not known to the general public, and the efforts taken by these authorities to obtain this information indicated the importance and sensitivity of the site and the phenomena connected to it. The crew's harsh warnings and the confiscation underscore the dubious foundations of operations in Antarctica, implying that some findings in this far-flung region are closely guarded by organizations that function outside of traditional political structures. Investigative journalist Linda Moulton Howe played a pivotal role in revealing a complex web of hidden agendas. Brian's shocking email, which described his strange experiences flying across the continent in the late 1980s and early 1990s, set the whole thing off. Linda became fascinated by his stories of unexplained flying objects and weird happenings, and she threw herself wholeheartedly into the mystery. Reaching out to experts and other military people who had also seen odd happenings in Antarctica gave her investigation additional depths. Each testimonial layered the narrative, presenting a picture of a region under intense monitoring and cloaked in mystery. Stories ranged from reports of enigmatic airship sightings 
to unexplained radio bursts in foreign languages coming from under the ice. Determinated to breach the veil of secrecy, Linda faced many challenges. She wrote of secret convoys racing to locations where strange activity was being observed and about the frequent suppression or discrediting of local witnesses by enigmatic powerful persons. Despite these obstacles, Linda's determination didn't waver, and both the general public and secret organizations took notice of her findings. Though not without opposition, the reliability of her sources and her thorough documentation started to get attention from the general public. The more she dug, the more it became clear that her findings had far-reaching ramifications, extending into the frigid wilderness and touching on the covert plans of major world powers. In the midst of tremendous mystery, Linda Moulton Howe's work generated issues not only about the nature of the phenomenon, but also about the fundamental nature of transparency and truth. During one of Brian's normal trips across the frozen continent of Antarctica, an unexpected event took place that would significantly raise the risks of his assignments. On one of these flights, Brian and his co-pilot noticed something very unusual, a big shining object that defied the definition of a typical airplane. With a diameter of more than 100 feet, this lozenge-shaped ship floated softly and effortlessly, exhibiting a stealth and aerodynamic efficiency unmatched by anything seen in modern aerospace technology. Brian was certain that he had seen what he had seen because the experience was so sudden and distinct. But the excitement around this finding was quickly replaced by a more troubling chapter. Not long after reporting the incident back at McMurdo Station, a group of people arrived who looked like they belonged in a secret government organization. These individuals stood out from the other military personnel at the station since they were dressed in black suits. They approached Brian with a firm order to delete the report of the unidentified craft sighting. They carried an air of intimidation and secrecy with them. Brian, unwavering in his devotion to the truth, declined to submit to their demands. There were consequences associated with this rejection. He was made clear that there would be dire repercussions, implying that if he continued to act in disobedience, he might suffer harm or even lose his career. The seriousness of the matter was evident. Whatever Brian had saw was big enough to elicit a major reaction from high-ranking officials, indicating that the ramifications of his observation extended well beyond Antarctica's frozen terrain. This wasn't just a one-off sighting of an enigmatic plane. It was a window into the thick veil of secrecy surrounding whatever operations were taking place in the dark recesses of the continent. Let's now explore the deep hole that Brian found in more detail. Not only did this hole have an unusual shape and glow, but it also defied the regular natural formations found in the freezing Antarctic landscape, implying that something strange lay beneath the surface. This revelation appeared to have consequences that went beyond simple curiosity. Brian noticed this oddity, and almost immediately there was an unusual amount of military activity in the region. The blazing hole was accompanied by classified convoys, a sign of the kind of secrecy and concern usually reserved for concerns of national security. The prompt response implied that military and government entities were very interested in whatever lay beneath the ice. Brian's contribution to this discovery went beyond just seeing it fall from the sky. He was immediately placed apart from his classmates upon his return to McMurdo Station and taken before a panel of DARPA experts, a body tasked with developing cutting-edge technologies for the U.S. military. These were no ordinary authorities. These were well-dressed, mysterious people who gave off an aura of power. Brian had a hard time answering questions regarding all he saw during this tough session. The officials gave him harsh warnings about the sensitive nature of the material and the consequences of sharing any information about the ice hole or the things connected to it. Under the icy exterior of Antarctica, a more complex and extensive story was being revealed by this covert investigation and the swift response to the ice hole's discovery. It was evident that there were significant risks involved and that the secrets were buried deep, literally, in the Antarctic ice. The already enigmatic setting is made more so by the reports of missing scientists and early deaths. Those who dare to delve deeper into the true nature of what lies beneath the surface of this frozen border are alarmed by these unnerving patterns. Investigative writer Linda Moulton Howe's account of Brian's experiences reveals a startling and puzzling string of disappearances. Numerous researchers sent to isolated Antarctic stations have disappeared without explanation throughout the years. Strange radio bursts in strange languages frequently preceded their disappearances, suggesting a connection to something or someone unfathomably advanced and unknown that was hiding deep beneath the ice. 
Reports of a mysterious white ship with a smooth surface that glides silently by the windows of shocked scientists and pilots deepen the plot. The strange correlation between these sightings and the unexpected and inexplicable personnel losses raises the possibility that these were not just random occurrences, but were carefully planned events. In addition, the funerals of many scientists who worked in the Antarctic and passed away too soon have come to light. Their reasons for passing away were not entirely clear and their passing strangely coincided with their missions there. These phenomena have very alarming ramifications. After the discovery, high-ranking military officials and classified convoys appeared, and any reports were quickly and violently suppressed, all of which pointed to a massive cover-up. These actions' secrecy and the advanced technology that has allegedly been seen fit uncomfortably with the idea of covert operations and goals. A terrifying prospect is suggested by the intricate web of events that these tremendous steps to conceal the true nature of actions in Antarctica may be linked to the security of secrets that go well beyond routine military operations or scientific research. Is there a chance that the destiny of these people who vanished has something to do with a darker, more significant secret that lies beneath the ice? As Linda Moulton Howe investigated the mysterious events in Antarctica further, the military and the public started to take notice of her tenacious efforts. Linda's investigation revealed a network of encouraging voices from within the military ranks, despite her journey being met with enormous obstacles and persistent resistance from unidentified security organizations. These were people who had either seen things that left others baffled or who had access to information that validated Brian's eerie encounters. Her results were greatly supported by the increasing number of corroborated testimonials, which also strengthened the veracity of the allegations regarding strange activity and cover-ups in the cold continent. But Linda's journey wasn't without serious setbacks. Unidentified security services kept a close eye on her whereabouts and correspondence, making it quite evident that her questions were not welcome. These organizations applied pressure in an effort to undermine her research and scare her sources, the increased scrutiny and even outright threats leveled at individuals who dared to speak out were clear indicators that the stakes were high. In spite of these obstacles, Linda's work started to receive support from groups outside of the military and specialized conspiracy circles. Her discoveries generated curiosity among the general public about government secrets and extraterrestrial phenomena, which led to widespread media coverage. Her platform was strengthened by this increased attention, which gave her more power to advocate for transparency and deeper exploration of the region's true nature under its icy surface. Linda's tenacity illuminated the hidden vastness of Antarctica and demonstrated the ability of investigative journalism to unearth game-changing facts in the face of overwhelming obstacles. It's critical to take into account the larger ramifications that these secrets contain, not only for the scientific community, but also for global geopolitics and historical narratives, as we continue to explore the mysteries of Antarctica. Not only is Antarctica a barren land of ice, but it's also a continent rich in unexplored resources and strategically important. First off, the existence of secret bases and inexplicable occurrences has the potential to drastically change our perception of history and the advancement of scientific technology. Beyond just being intriguing, the implications of sophisticated alien technology or covert military facilities hint at a parallel technological era that has the potential to alter textbooks and refute accepted scientific beliefs. Moreover, Antarctica's enormous untapped resource base increases its geopolitical significance. This includes vast freshwater supplies, rare material wealth, and natural gas and oil deposits that are subject to speculation. Antarctica's unexplored riches are a very alluring reward in a time when the world's resources are running out and competition for them is fierce. Not only is there potential wealth under the ice, but whomever controls this huge unoccupied territory will have a strategic advantage, which is the source of geopolitical turmoil. The special location of Antarctica provides important military and geopolitical advantages as well. A nation would be able to keep an eye on satellite trajectories and international communications if it had control over Antarctica, which is essential in today's conflict. The isolation and harshness of the continent make it the perfect place for operations requiring a high degree of secrecy, which adds even more mystery and significance. But the goal of the 1959 Antarctic Treaty System is to protect the continent for non-combative scientific research. This pact, which requires that all activities, especially those connected to mineral resources, be postponed except for scientific research, 
has been instrumental in preventing the exploitation and militarization of Antarctica. Despite these restrictions, the pact is nevertheless under strain from the growing global desire for resources and strategic dominance, which is escalating geopolitical tensions among the member states. Thus, the activity and secrecy that Brian reported and Linda Howe looked into could be a crucial flashpoint for world relations. There appears to be more going on on the ice than just environmental research and peaceful exploration, given the reported cover-ups and the classified nature of the operations. In addition to sparking arguments in science and history, the confirmation of secret bases and alien technology might lead to a worldwide geopolitical conflict over who is in charge of the information and technology kept concealed in Antarctica's frozen depths. Fundamentally, the mysteries concealed beneath Antarctica's ice have more to do with manipulating narrative and power in a fast-changing global order than they do with finding new life forms or comprehending climate change. The mystery of what lies beneath the ice is entwined with the very real politics of the 21st century as nations seek the frozen continent for its potential resources and strategic benefits. We hope you found these facts intriguing. If you've heard them before or have any thoughts to share, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to A World to Discover to join us on our journey of discovery. While you're still here, feel free to click on other videos you will see on your screen right now. We, we hiked in uh, early in the morning and we were pretty excited because the uh, the weather was actually really good. We're expecting expecting it to be hot being in the Grand Canyon in August. An amazing thing happened at the canyon. This is a rare look at what could happen if disaster did strike in such a rugged place. That's why everybody's sitting over there. Don't worry, take a picture. The Grand Canyon, not just one of the world's seven natural wonders, holds nearly two billion years of history. You can truly grasp the structure of the canyon by observing how straight the outcrop belt is. That's the Paleozoic contact line running sharply across the landscape. Beyond its stunning visuals, the canyon offers almost limitless troves of geological data. But the only history we truly know is the one we discover ourselves, not the one presented to us, which is often filled with inaccuracies. Some even speculate that a lost civilization, possibly Egyptian, once inhabited the Grand Canyon. This breathtaking area is known for its vast, vibrant rock formations, yet the government has restricted access to over 90% of this historical treasure. To add to the mystery, the small section that was accessible has now been shut down, following a mysterious discovery made by a drone. What exactly did the drone uncover, and why is the government so secretive about it? Join us as we uncover one of the American government's best-kept secrets, the forbidden area of the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is a marvel that every American should experience firsthand. As one of the world's seven natural wonders, its creation story is more complex than you might think. Sculpted over millions of years by erosion, wind, rain, and the mighty Colorado River, the canyon stretches 277 miles long and has an average width exceeding 10 miles. But the most surprising fact is that the canyon's depth contains rocks dating from 250 million to 2 billion years old, earning it the nickname the Basement of History. The Grand Canyon holds a treasure trove of geological information you won't find anywhere else. Yet, an unbelievable truth emerges. The American government has imposed restrictions on public access, rendering over 90% of this natural wonder off-limits. The most essential parts of the Grand Canyon are effectively shut down, but that's not the end of it. The government recently announced the indefinite closure of the portion of the canyon that was previously open to the public. Even more shocking is the fact that no single authority or agency manages the Grand Canyon. It's under the jurisdiction of several federal agencies, including the National Park Service, the Bureau of Land Management, the General Land Office, the U.S. Forest Service, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and even the Secret Service. This alone is enough to suggest that there is more to the park than we are led to believe. For instance, there is a section known as the Forbidden Area. Officially, this area is designated as a no-drone zone, but something interesting happened recently. A drone entered areas that are only accessible to park rangers, military personnel, and government officials, specifically where the Colorado and Little Colorado rivers converge, extending to the Anasazi Bridge. This region is significant to Native American tribes, particularly the Hopi and Navajo, 
who have lived there for thousands of years and consider it sacred. We also know that the area contains the Anasazi Bridge, a prehistoric structure made from pine trees, suspended 300 feet above the Colorado River. Historians believe the ancestral Pueblo people, who were ancestors of the Hopi and Navajo, used the bridge to cross the river. The government maintains that restrictions on the forbidden area of the canyon were put in place to protect the natural and cultural heritage of the park, ensure visitor safety, and preserve the park for future generations. However, some researchers believe these restrictions are a cover-up for a secret purpose. One popular theory is that the Forbidden Zone was once home to an ancient, possibly alien civilization that thrived within the canyon's depths. They even suggest that a secret underground city was found within the canyon in the early 1900s. This raises the question, why else would the government close off a canyon that could significantly boost tourism and the economy? Before continuing, what are your thoughts on the government restricting access to nearly 90% of this natural wonder? Some researchers have also revealed that ancient reptile fossils linked to an ancient Egyptian civilization were discovered in restricted areas. But the most significant revelation comes from experts who claim that a secretive branch of the US federal government is responsible for monitoring the entire region. If you think their arguments make no sense, you'll be surprised by what we'll reveal next. Before diving into the shocking discovery by Alan Krill and others, let's take a brief journey down memory lane. The origin of the US government's efforts to restrict access to the Grand Canyon dates back to 1908, when President Theodore Roosevelt initiated efforts to protect the Grand Canyon from the destructive forces of timber and mining. However, it wasn't until 1919 that Congress officially designated it a national park, bringing it under federal protection. Fortunately, before these federal restrictions were put in place, explorer G.E. Kincaid ventured into the depths of the Colorado River in search of precious metals like gold, silver, and copper. During his expedition near El Tova Crystal Canyon, he noticed peculiar stains on the sedimentary rock formations. His investigation led to a startling discovery, a hidden set of stairs carved into the canyon wall, leading to an artificial cavern entrance. Inside, the walls were adorned with ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Deeper into the tunnel, he found a massive underground complex capable of housing up to 50,000 people, complete with chambers, granaries, kitchens, dining areas, and metalworking workshops equipped with hardened copper tools. The origin of this strange complex remains a mystery. Within its hundreds of chambers, Kincaid joined forces with another explorer, Professor Jordan. Together, they found a treasure trove of artifacts, including swords and shields crafted from copper, bronze, and an unidentified gray metal. Despite extensive research, Kincaid and Professor Jordan were unable to determine who built the citadel. These stories tell of the rich cultural heritage of the American Southwest. While often dismissed as myths or legends, these stories are essential to the indigenous peoples who have lived in the region for millennia. The Grand Canyon, far from being merely a beautiful landscape or tourist destination, is a place of spiritual importance for these communities. Still, much of it remains a mystery to us today. But if we dismiss these ideas as mere myths, the shocking truth is that researchers have made recent observations that suggest there may have been life in those areas long ago. One of the most recent discoveries came from Norwegian geologist Alan Krill. While hiking the Bright Angel Trail in Grand Canyon National Park, Krill stumbled upon a remarkable find. This is where the debate begins. Some sources suggest the footprints he found belong to an ancient animal, possibly a creature capable of laying hard-shelled eggs. However, these footprints are just one piece of the puzzle hidden within the Grand Canyon. While Krill's findings have sparked debate within the scientific community, something interesting happened. The government shut down the section where Krill found the prints. The lack of access prevents any definitive confirmation of the various theories. As mentioned earlier, the government's efforts to restrict access to the Grand Canyon didn't start today. But what exactly are they keeping from us? And why is the canyon declared a no-drone area? The Smithsonian National Museum played a role in this mystery. We previously mentioned that President Theodore Roosevelt initiated efforts to protect the canyon in 1908. Although he provided reasons for his decree, 
Some believe he was hiding something by closing off sections of the canyon. This secret must be so important that it required the involvement of the President of the United States. But that's not all. The canyon came under federal control, and about four federal agencies were selected to oversee it. If you think that's all the government did to keep people away, you're in for a shock. We talked earlier about Professors Kincaid and Jordan's expedition into the Grand Canyon and their interactions with the locals. Just months after their initial expedition, they returned to the canyon's depths, determined to explore the mysterious underground city further. The silence surrounding their findings has been interpreted in two ways. Either someone in the top echelons of the American government warned the museum to suppress the matter, or the two professors were telling lies all along. However, there is yet another account that supports the claims of Kincaid and Jordan, John Wesley Powell's expedition. We'll soon discuss Powell's accounts, but it's essential to mention that decades have passed without concrete evidence supporting the existence of Professors Kincaid and Jordan or their groundbreaking expedition. Despite the lack of official corroboration, the story was published in the Arizona Gazette, igniting genuine interest in the Grand Canyon. The story captivated scientists, including archaeologists and geologists alike, not just for the breathtaking beauty of the canyon, but for the possibility of finding ancient secrets hidden within its depths. This newfound obsession with the Grand Canyon began an exciting chapter in the ongoing quest to resolve this mystery. After more than 100 years, the world had forgotten the claims that Kincaid and Jordan found a lost civilization in the Grand Canyon. But that all changed with the publication of John Wesley Powell's expedition down the Colorado River. Powell was a renowned geologist and the first director of the Bureau of American Ethnology, playing a vital role in exploring the American West. His leadership of the U.S. Geological Survey was instrumental in mapping and understanding the nation's geological features. However, his most significant contribution might be his exploration of the Grand Canyon area in the late 1800s. Here are the intriguing details of his journey. In 1869, John Wesley Powell, a Civil War veteran and esteemed geologist, embarked on a scientific expedition down the Colorado River and through the Grand Canyon. With a team of 10 men, four boats and provisions for a 10-month journey, Powell set off from the Green River in Wyoming on May 24, 1869. As they navigated the dangerous rapids of the Colorado River, Powell and his crew witnessed a landscape of extraordinary beauty. Carved walls, majestic arches, deep canyons, and towering mounds. However, amidst these natural wonders, Powell made a rare discovery. Several caves along a well-worn path, fragments of pottery and hieroglyphs carved into the rocks. These remnants indicated that an ancient civilization once thrived in this remarkable region. It's important to note that Kincaid and Jordan embarked on their expedition to verify Powell's claims about an ancient civilization within the Grand Canyon, allegedly sponsored by the Smithsonian National Museum. While Powell's first expedition was successful, he needed concrete evidence for his claims. This theory is supported by historical records, which indicate that Powell's company was attacked by a Native American tribe, resulting in the tragic loss of three crew members at the Virgin River's mouth on August 30th, 1869. Historical accounts suggest that the Shivwitz Band of the Paiute Indians may have been responsible for the fatalities. After Powell's expeditions, he recorded carvings that were not typical of Native American cultures, which seemed to support the notion that Kincaid and Jordan truly encountered Egyptian artifacts. But the question remains, how could ancient Egyptians have reached Native American lands, and why would the government keep this a secret? Some experts believe the government is hiding historical information about Native Americans that, if exposed, could alter public opinion about how these indigenous peoples have been treated, particularly regarding land ownership. While we cannot be certain, there is a theory about how ancient Egyptian relics could have ended up among Native Americans. This wouldn't be the first time ancient Egyptian artifacts have been found outside Egypt. Beyond well-documented discoveries in Africa and the Middle East, ancient Egyptian artifacts have been found in some unbelievable locations. For example, in Brisbane Water National Park in Australia, 
a natural sandstone crypt was discovered in the 1980s, displaying approximately 300 hieroglyphic symbols depicting Egyptian deities, animals, and other motifs. While some suggest that Spanish miners carved these symbols during the 19th century gold rush, others believe that the Egyptians could have sailed there from Egypt. However, considering the nature of their wooden vessels, ancient Egyptians would have faced a daunting and dangerous journey, making it unlikely they would have reached such distant lands. Yet there is another fascinating account, the legendary Pharaoh Necho, credited with commissioning a daring maritime expedition. According to the Greek historian Herodotus, Necho paid a crew of Phoenician navigators to sail around Africa, a feat that allegedly took three years to complete. This story, transmitted through oral tradition, aligns with Necho's reputation for wild adventures. He even attempted to construct a canal connecting the Nile to the Red Sea, a precursor to the Suez Canal, further demonstrating his visionary spirit. While there is no definite proof that Necho's African expedition took place, there is a chance that he could have achieved such a feat. Historical records show that the canal connecting the Nile and Red Seas was eventually completed by the Persians under the Achaemenid dynasty in 270 BC. Necho's ambitious engineering projects and subsequent naval expansion efforts suggest he was a ruler interested in sea exploration and territorial expansion. Although it's difficult to conclude that ancient Egyptians had contact with Native Americans within the Grand Canyon, any evidence supporting such a connection would dramatically alter our understanding of pre-Columbian American history. Whatever the truth may be, one thing is certain. The American government is determined to restrict access to and around the Grand Canyon for reasons known only to them. In 2011, a high-profile incident involving a drone pilot made headlines. The pilot was fined and had his equipment seized for flying over the Grand Canyon. He was also forced to surrender his drone's memory card under threat of a search warrant and was fined $320 for violating a federal code. Thank you for staying with us. Why do you think the government is so determined to keep the public away from the Grand Canyon? Share your opinions with us in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, click on the following video on your screen. You'll love it. It has been two years since NASA's James Webb Telescope gave us a stunning first look at the depths of our universe. Found a terrestrial planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. It's the nearest exoplanet we will ever found because it's the nearest star to the sun and we are very excited about this. The most recent space news is that they found another planet, Proxima something? Yeah, yeah Proxima B. If it has an atmosphere, it is actually pushing up the temperature through the greenhouse effect above zero degrees and in the liquid water habitable zone. The James Webb Telescope has made a remarkable discovery. Lights that appear similar to city lights shining from a point seven trillion miles away. This finding has ignited new interest in the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The telescope focused on Proxima Centauri b, the nearest exoplanet to our solar system, and detected these unusual bright lights. Could these be indications of an alien civilization? Let us delve into how the James Webb Telescope revealed these phenomena that could transform our understanding of the universe. Distant glimmers of alien life. For years, both scientists and the public have been eager to discover what life might look like beyond our solar system. Any hint of life elsewhere has always been met with great enthusiasm. Then a groundbreaking moment arrived when the James Webb Space Telescope provided strong evidence of life in space. As it surveyed the vastness of the cosmos, this advanced telescope observed something intriguing on Proxima Centauri b, a distant exoplanet. The telescope detected lights that resemble those seen in cities on Earth hinting at the possible existence of an alien civilization on this far-off world. This discovery has ignited widespread excitement among scientists who are fascinated by the potential implications. It raises the possibility that intelligent beings could be out there, organizing their societies in ways we have yet to fully understand, and we are only now beginning to see the evidence. These city-like lights, situated seven trillion miles away, have left NASA engineers in awe pondering how long these lights have been visible in space, just waiting for technology to finally reveal them. David Kipping, an astronomer at Columbia University, described Proxima b where the lights were found as a complex planet, 
Unlike most rocky planets that absorb sunlight and emit infrared energy, this exoplanet behaves differently due to its unique relationship with its host star, Proxima Centauri. This discovery by the James Webb Space Telescope underscores its significance. The telescope's ability to detect infrared wavelengths was crucial in identifying the unusual thermal signature of Proxima b, which is vital for understanding the planet's atmospheric conditions. Researchers plan to continue using the telescope to further explore the atmosphere of this planet and assess its habitability. The James Webb Telescope's sensitivity to infrared light allows it to observe Proxima Centauri b during the night. While other space telescopes struggle to detect faint lights in the vast darkness of space, the James Webb Telescope can detect even the faintest glimmers. This makes it an essential tool for confirming whether the so-called city lights on the dark side of Proxima b are genuine. The telescope can pick up man-made lights in space if they fall within a very narrow frequency band, much narrower than regular starlight. Proxima b has a dynamic interaction with its star. During the day, solar panels on the planet capture the star's energy, while its spectral edge reflects light. As Proxima b orbits its star, it experiences day and night cycles similar to Earth, with extreme heat during the day and cooler temperatures at night. The planet undergoes significant temperature differences, influenced by its composition. For example, if Proxima b lacks an atmosphere, the temperature variation between day and night would be severe. Without atmospheric gases or oceans to moderate temperatures, the day side would become extremely hot, while the night side would plunge into freezing conditions. This dramatic temperature difference is of great interest to astronomers, as it offers insights into Proxima b's atmospheric composition. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its unmatched infrared imaging capabilities, is well equipped to analyze the planet's thermal emissions, providing valuable data on its atmosphere. Interestingly, the James Webb Telescope's orbit around Earth coincides with Proxima b's orbital period, allowing for continuous observations of its day and night cycles every 11.2 Earth days. If Proxima b has an atmosphere, the next step is to examine its atmospheric chemistry to determine if it can support life. Indicators like oxygen, water vapor and methane would suggest habitable conditions. If these elements are found on the planet, it would confirm its potential to sustain life. This requires precise capture and analysis of light passing through the planet's atmosphere, a challenging task. While the James Webb Telescope excels in characterizing planetary atmospheres, its primary focus is on analyzing variations in water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane. Although it has some limitations in detecting bonded oxygen, a key indicator of life, the telescope is also capable of searching for other crucial elements like ozone, which signals a healthy atmosphere. As scientists continue to explore the findings from the James Webb Space Telescope, the quest to explore distant worlds intensifies, bringing us closer to answering the question of whether we are alone in the universe. Exploring new worlds, it's crucial to note that the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, has its limitations, as it can only observe a select number of the closest habitable worlds to Earth. To gain more detailed insights into the atmospheres of distant exoplanets, astronomers are turning to ground-based observatories like the Extremely Large Telescope, ELT, which is expected to begin operations in 2028. The ELT is specifically designed to provide clearer and more detailed data on the atmospheric structures of these distant worlds, potentially revealing their ability to support life. Scientists eagerly anticipate the capabilities that future space telescopes like the ELT will bring. In the interim, the JWST remains a vital tool in our ongoing exploration of distant exoplanets. Despite its constraints, it continues to yield profound insights that could reshape our understanding of the cosmos, both in the present and future. Researchers have ambitious plans for the next generation of space telescopes. Their goal is to reduce the overwhelming glare of stars, allowing for a clearer view of the planets orbiting them. Imagine it like shading your eyes from the sun to see more clearly. These future telescopes will help scientists study the faint light reflected off distant planets, enabling a more detailed analysis of their atmospheres and their potential to support life. However, this is no easy task. Distinguishing between gases produced by living organisms and those from natural planetary activities, such as volcanic eruptions, will be critical. Scientists are committed to improving our understanding of these far-off planets, ensuring they can accurately identify genuine signs of life and not be misled by natural processes that might mimic them. 
The JWST is already providing a glimpse into what future studies might reveal. As we continue to push the limits of our knowledge in space exploration, we move closer to unraveling the complexities of the universe and our place within it. Since ancient times, humanity has questioned whether we are alone in the universe. This enduring question drives much of today's scientific research. Currently, the JWST is actively observing various planets and moons, searching for signs that could indicate the presence of alien life. Many now believe that extraterrestrial life might indeed exist somewhere in the vast cosmos, waiting to be discovered. To explore this possibility, two American astronomers, Jill Tarter and Thomas Pearson, launched a project in 1984 called the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI. They established a non-profit organization dedicated to listening for radio waves from space. Radio waves being ideal for long-distance travel without losing strength. This is why the Allen Telescope Array, a set of 42 radio telescopes located in the mountains of California, is used exclusively for this purpose. Despite over three decades of searching, SETI has yet to detect any definitive radio signals from aliens. However, Jill Tarter remains optimistic, believing that with today's advanced technology, a breakthrough might be just around the corner. She hopes that people worldwide will join this exciting quest for companionship in the cosmos. Recently, there has been renewed excitement following reports from NASA that the JWS might have detected lights resembling those from a city on a planet not too far from Earth. The JWST is currently our most powerful tool for space exploration, positioned a million miles away from Earth and sending back detailed information about the earliest parts of the universe. It is specifically designed to uncover details that have eluded us in the past, enhancing our understanding of how galaxies, stars and planets form. Astronomers are leveraging the JWST's cutting-edge technology, including its highly sensitive camera and specialized filters, to study and interpret the subtle colors surrounding stars and planets. They depend on this telescope to reveal the physical and chemical compositions of locations light years away by isolating specific wavelengths of light. The JWST is not merely observing. It's actively searching the atmospheres of other planets for the faintest signs of life, using its unparalleled ability to explore both space and time. It has already made astonishing discoveries, such as identifying more mass in the universe than previously thought, hidden within massive galaxies. These findings have prompted scientists to rethink some of their theories about the universe's origins and evolution. With every new discovery made by the JWST, our drive to understand distant planets grows, broadening our knowledge of life beyond Earth. New clues in the quest for aliens, humanity is now leveraging the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, to explore deeper into space than ever before. This powerful tool is helping us gather crucial data on distant worlds, offering fresh insights that could answer significant questions about these far-off planets. Just two decades ago, our knowledge of planets outside our solar system was minimal. Since then, astronomers have identified over 4,000 exoplanets orbiting distant stars, demonstrating the remarkable extent of our curiosity and technological advancement. However, NASA believes these discoveries are only scratching the surface, estimating that there could be trillions of exoplanets yet to be discovered. Scientists remain relentless in their quest to find potential habitats for extraterrestrial life. Occasionally, they stumble upon promising clues, for example, during the Galileo spacecraft's mission to Jupiter, a surprising discovery was made, a possible sign of plant life. This marked the first detection of a biosignature, known as the Vegetation Red Edge, VRE. The VRE detects life by analyzing how light reflects off surfaces. With this tool, the JWST is poised to uncover even more about life in the cosmos, focusing on planets that may reside in habitable zones around their stars. When such indicators emerge, the VRE could dramatically alter our understanding, potentially guiding us toward intelligent life beyond Earth. Imagine sunlight filtering through different atmospheric layers, splitting into various wavelengths as atoms and molecules absorb the light. This process creates a unique spectral fingerprint that scientists can analyze using spectroscopy. Researchers believe that as starlight interacts with a planet's atmosphere, the JWST will capture this light, revealing the composition of these distant atmospheres. This capability could be the missing link in deciphering the makeup of planets far from our solar system. Planets similar in size to Earth typically have atmospheres rich in carbon dioxide, nitrogen and oxygen, key ingredients for life. However, the presence or absence of other, less common compounds might suggest different forms of life or even advanced civilizations. 
For instance, chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, synthetic chemicals primarily used for refrigeration, could indicate intelligent life if detected by the JWST in a distant planet's atmosphere. Such a finding would expand the scope of astronomical research, offering a new realm for studying planetary atmospheres and the potential for civilizations beyond the Milky Way. Contemplating life beyond Earth broadens our understanding, pushing the boundaries of what we know about biology. While we often assume life requires a temperate climate to flourish, the reality might be far more diverse and extreme. Consider extremophiles, microbial life forms that defy conventional ideas of habitability. These organisms thrive in environments that would be inhospitable to most life, enduring boiling temperatures up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and surviving in highly acidic conditions with pH levels below 3. Their existence underscores the resilience of life, even in the harshest conditions. As the search for habitable worlds evolves, the potential for life in unexpected places challenges our understanding of the universe. The search for life in unusual places. Considering the vastness and diversity of space, our search for extraterrestrial life must be broad and inclusive. While Earth-like planets orbiting sun-like stars are logical starting points, it's essential to explore less typical scenarios, such as exoplanets around red dwarf stars, which are abundant throughout the universe. Though these stars are dimmer and cooler than our sun, they provide unique environments where life might thrive. Their longer lifespans also allow ample time for the slow evolution of life. Take the TRAPPIST-1 system as an example. It features a faint red dwarf star, with seven rocky planets orbiting it, three of which lie in the habitable zone, potentially allowing liquid water to exist. Although this star is smaller and cooler than our sun, its gentle light could support life. By studying the light from this star, scientists aim to uncover clues about the possible living conditions within the TRAPPIST-1 system. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, has identified this star, located 41 light years away in the constellation Leo, as a promising target for further study. Ward Howard, a NASA Sagan Fellow and lead researcher from the University of Colorado Boulder, expressed his excitement about these findings. He noted that, for the first time, the JWST allows us to search for planets around other stars that may have secondary atmospheres similar to Earth's. Understanding these stars is crucial to comprehending the planets that orbit them. Among the stars in the cosmos, Proxima Centauri stands out due to its proximity, only 4.25 light years from the Sun, making it the closest star to Earth. Its faint glow is difficult to detect in our night sky meaning any potentially habitable planets would need to orbit much closer to maintain the conditions necessary for life. On August 24, 2016, astronomers discovered a fascinating planet, Proxima b, with 1.3 times the mass of Earth, perfectly positioned within Proxima Centauri's habitable zone. This zone offers the right balance of light to melt ice and possibly sustain life. Proxima b orbits its small red star just 4.6 million miles away, facing hazards that challenge the existence of life. One major threat is the intense solar winds from Proxima Centauri, which could strip the planet of its atmosphere. Despite these harsh conditions, Proxima b receives enough sunlight to maintain liquid water, a crucial ingredient for life. The close orbit of Proxima b results in tidal locking, meaning one side of the planet always faces the star, bathed in continuous sunlight, while the other side remains in perpetual darkness. This creates a stark contrast between the two hemispheres, one in constant daylight, the other in eternal night. This situation is similar to the relationship between Earth and the Moon, where the same side always faces Earth. Despite Proxima Centauri's small size, it emits enough light and heat to potentially support life in a manner comparable to Earth. Could the strange city-like lights observed on Proxima Centauri b indicate advanced alien life, or is there another explanation we haven't yet considered? What do you think is the truth behind this discovery? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. We're looking at Neptune's orbit, and it's not following Newton's laws. And this is all. Out where Uranus and Neptune are, tons of ice, tons of frozen gases as we might think of them. Methane, ammonia, water. And so that's what makes up their composition predominantly. We end tonight with the clearest pictures yet of Neptune, the most distant planet in our solar system.
While Jupiter boasts its mesmerizing storms, Mars captivates with its potential for life, and Saturn dazzles with its stunning rings. Courtesy of the Cassini spacecraft's 13-year grand tour, Neptune seems to quietly orbit in the distant chill of space. It's the eighth planet from our Sun, remote and enigmatic, often overlooked in the bustling solar system family. So why does Neptune receive less attention compared to its planetary siblings? Let's dive deep into the blue to uncover the mysteries and majesty of this distant ice giant. Join us as we explore what makes Neptune unique and why it deserves a closer look. Named after the Roman god of the sea, Neptune is often referred to as an ice giant due to its composition, which consists primarily of hydrogen, helium, and traces of methane. With a diameter about four times that of Earth, Neptune boasts a striking blue hue attributed to the presence of methane in its atmosphere, which absorbs red light and reflects blue. Discovered in 1846, Neptune's exploration has been limited compared to its closer planetary counterparts. However, the historic flyby of NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989 provided invaluable insights into this distant planet, unveiling its dynamic weather patterns, unique moons, and fascinating rings. Among its moons, Triton stands out for its retrograde orbit, moving opposite to Neptune's rotation, suggesting a complex history of capture and gravitational interactions. Neptune's atmosphere is characterized by powerful storms, including the Great Dark Spot, reminiscent of Jupiter's Great Red Spot, showcasing the planet's turbulent and dynamic nature. Despite its remote location and challenges associated with exploration, Neptune remains a target of scientific curiosity, offering valuable opportunities to expand our understanding of planetary systems and the evolution of our solar system. While Mercury often steals the spotlight in astrology due to its perceived retrograde motions, which enthusiasts often blame for disruptions and challenges, the truth is far less mystical. It's merely an optical illusion resulting from the relative positions of Earth and Mercury in their orbits. However, despite Mercury's frequent appearances in astrological discussions, Neptune remains largely overlooked. Its astrological influence, while less discussed, is equally intriguing, governing realms of dreams, intuition, and mysteries. This discrepancy between the attention given to Mercury and the relative neglect of Neptune in astrology reflects the elusive and distant nature of the latter within the solar system. It underscores the vast difference between the roles planets play in astrology and their exploration in the realms of physical science. Focus on ice giants. Neptune and Uranus, often overshadowed by their larger gas giant cousins, hold a special place in the pantheon of our solar system as ice giants. This classification stems not from their being literal ice, but from their intriguing construction, largely from substances like water, ammonia, and methane, which in the cold depths of space form icy compounds. Both planets share a similar size, being significantly larger than Earth, yet smaller than Jupiter and Saturn, which places them in a unique category of their own. Their atmospheres are thick with hydrogen and helium, but it's the methane that really sets them apart, absorbing red light and giving these distant worlds their characteristic blue hues. What's particularly fascinating about Neptune and Uranus is their internal structure, which, under extreme pressures, might form diamonds from compressed carbon atoms, a phenomenon that remains a tantalizing possibility not observable on the gas giants. This unusual atmospheric and internal chemistry makes Neptune and Uranus key subjects in planetary science, offering insights into not only planetary formation and evolution, but also into conditions that are utterly alien compared to those found on terrestrial planets. The mystery of Neptune's color. In a fascinating twist of scientific inquiry, a study initially focused on the broader atmospheric characteristics of Neptune ended up shedding light on one of the planet's most captivating mysteries, its striking blue color. Led by Patrick Irwin, a planetary physicist at Oxford University, the team set out to explore the atmospheres of both Neptune and Uranus. Their research was not originally intended to delve into why Neptune exhibits such a vivid azure hue. However, the findings inadvertently provided valuable insights. 
The team discovered that Neptune's color is primarily due to the absorption of red light by methane in its atmosphere, which leaves behind the richer blues and greens that we see. Further analysis revealed an interesting distinction between Neptune and its celestial twin, Uranus. It turns out that Neptune has a thinner layer of methane haze compared to Uranus. This thinner haze allows for a deeper, more intense blue to emerge, setting Neptune apart in the visual spectrum of the solar system. This discovery highlights how scientific journeys can sometimes yield unexpected yet enlightening results, deepening our understanding of the planets beyond our Earth. History of Exploring Neptune Neptune's exploration story, though not as extensively documented as Mars or Jupiter's, is undeniably captivating. A pivotal moment in our comprehension of Neptune unfolded with NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft embarking on a historic flyby in 1989. This mission stands as the sole instance where we've had the opportunity to closely observe Neptune. As Voyager 2 soared past, it bestowed upon us breathtaking images that revolutionized our perception of this distant world. It unveiled a vividly blue planet, adorned with subtle rings and intriguing moons. Among these, Triton stands out, its orbit around Neptune defying convention by moving opposite to the planet's rotation, hinting at a potentially unique origin story. Voyager 2's flyby yielded invaluable insights into Neptune's atmosphere, unveiling its dynamic weather patterns, including the remarkable discovery of the Great Dark Spot, an Earth-sized storm showcasing Neptune's tumultuous nature. This mission profoundly enriched our comprehension of the outer planets and endures as a pivotal moment in planetary science. Through Voyager 2's journey, we ventured farther into the depths of our solar system, unraveling the mysteries of Neptune and expanding our understanding of the vast celestial landscape beyond. Neptune storms and atmospheric phenomena. Neptune's atmosphere is alive with dramatic weather phenomena, most notably its storms, which can be as captivating as they are mysterious. The most famous of these is the Great Dark Spot, discovered by NASA's Voyager 2 during its 1989 flyby. This massive storm, roughly the size of Earth, showcased the fastest winds ever recorded in our solar system, reaching speeds of up to 2100 kilometers per hour. However, unlike Jupiter's Great Red Spot, which has raged for centuries, Neptune's storms show much shorter lifespans. The Great Dark Spot had completely vanished by the time the Hubble Space Telescope observed Neptune in 1994, illustrating just how quickly these colossal weather systems can change. These rapid transformations hint at a highly dynamic atmosphere where storms develop and dissipate much faster than on Jupiter. The fleeting nature of these storms poses a significant challenge for scientists trying to study them. By the time a telescope like Hubble makes a return observation, the atmospheric landscape may have completely altered. This transient behavior makes Neptune's atmosphere one of the most volatile and least understood among the solar system's giants, inviting more in-depth exploration to unravel its meteorological mysteries, role of Triton, and other moons. As we delve deeper into Neptune's celestial family, we cannot overlook Triton, Neptune's largest moon. This intriguing moon captures the imagination with its peculiar retrograde orbit, meaning it moves in the opposite direction to Neptune's rotation. This unusual path suggests a dramatic origin story for Triton, likely captured by Neptune's gravity rather than forming alongside it. Such a capture is not just a spectacle of celestial dynamics, but sheds light on the migration histories of other objects in our solar system. Triton isn't just notable for its orbit. It's slightly larger than our own moon and showcases a surface rich with geological features, pointing to a potentially vibrant past. This includes the likelihood of a subsurface ocean, making Triton a key player in Neptune's system and a target of high scientific interest. Surrounding Neptune, several other moons orbit, most of them smaller and irregularly shaped compared to Triton. These moons, along with the planet's delicate ring system, form a complex gravitational dance that influences the system's stability and evolution. Understanding these interactions helps astronomers piece together the dynamic processes governing the outer solar system, providing clues about the formation and evolution of planetary systems as a whole. Current and future observations. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, our most advanced space observatory, 
has recently turned its powerful gaze towards Neptune, offering us some of the clearest and most detailed images of this distant planet in over three decades. With JWST's sophisticated instruments, we're peering into the icy depths of Neptune's atmosphere and gaining unprecedented views of its intricate ring system and numerous moons. The telescope's ability to capture high-resolution images in infrared light has illuminated features that were previously too faint to discern. This includes several of Neptune's lesser-known moons and the fine particles that compose its rings, revealing new details about their composition and dynamics. These observations are crucial as they not only enhance our understanding of Neptune's physical properties, but also help astronomers piece together the planet's evolutionary history and its current meteorological phenomena. The data gathered by JWST is expected to keep scientists busy for years, unlocking secrets of the furthest reaches of our solar system. This rich influx of data from JWST marks a significant milestone in our quest to understand Neptune's complex climate system, its unique atmospheric chemistry, and its dynamic environment. Challenges in Exploring Neptune Exploring Neptune presents unique challenges, primarily due to its immense distance from the Sun, approximately 4.5 billion kilometers away. This vast expanse not only increases travel time and costs, but also poses significant technical hurdles for communication and power supply. Spacecraft venturing to Neptune must rely on radioisotope thermoelectric generators for power, as solar energy is too weak at such distances. These generators convert the heat from radioactive decay into electricity, providing a reliable source of power for the spacecraft's instruments and systems. Moreover, Neptune's remote location means that any mission there faces prolonged communication delays, complicating real-time command or data retrieval. The round-trip communication time between Earth and Neptune can range from hours to days, depending on the positions of the planets in their respective orbits. This isolation requires spacecraft systems to operate autonomously for extended periods, making them highly reliant on pre-programmed commands and onboard decision-making algorithms. Despite these difficulties, Neptune's exploration is crucial for understanding the outer solar system and uncovering the mysteries of ice giants. By studying Neptune's atmosphere, magnetic field and moons, scientists can gain insights into planetary formation and evolution beyond the realm of terrestrial planets. However, these logistical complexities have led to Neptune being visited less frequently than its closer and perhaps more immediately intriguing planetary neighbors like Mars and Jupiter. Nonetheless, the scientific community continues to advocate for future missions to Neptune, recognizing the invaluable knowledge they could yield about our solar system's distant frontier, future missions, and scientific goals. In the realm of planetary exploration, the scientific community has set its sights on some ambitious missions for the future, with Neptune featuring prominently in their plans. Currently, there's a lively debate about the next big target for a dedicated orbital mission in our outer solar system. While Neptune remains a candidate for exploration, the focus has somewhat shifted towards Uranus. Scientists recommend prioritizing a mission to Uranus within the next decade, citing its accessibility and the potential to yield significant scientific data swiftly. Despite this prioritization, the fascination with Neptune continues to grow, compelling the scientific community to consider a detailed exploration of this distant planet. A proposed mission plan suggests launching a spacecraft to Neptune around 2033, with an expected arrival in 2049. This timeline could be extended if Uranus is indeed chosen first, possibly pushing Neptune's close examination to the mid-2050s. The goals of these future missions are robust and revolve around a deeper understanding of the ice giants. Researchers aim to study Neptune's dynamic atmosphere, its intriguing storm systems, and its magnetic environment. Moreover, there's a strong interest in Neptune's moons, particularly Triton, with its retrograde orbit and geologically active surface, which could provide crucial insights into the solar system's history and evolution. These missions are expected to deliver groundbreaking data, helping to unravel some of the enduring mysteries of our solar system's most distant planets. Neptune occupies a unique position as the most distant major planet in our solar system, often overlooked in the race to explore closer and more accessible celestial bodies. 
Its status as an underappreciated giant belies the intriguing mysteries and scientific potential it holds. As the final frontier in planetary exploration, Neptune offers a gateway to understanding not only the dynamics of ice giants, but also the broader mechanisms at play in the outer reaches of our solar system. Future missions to Neptune could unravel these enigmas, enhancing our knowledge of planetary formation, evolution, and the peculiarities that govern such distant worlds. As we consider sending probes to its orbit, the lessons learned from Neptune will likely illuminate countless unknowns about our cosmic neighborhood, underlining the importance of reaching out to this distant blue planet. We hope you found these facts intriguing. If you've heard them before or have any thoughts to share, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to A World to Discover to join us on our journey of discovery. While you're still here, feel free to click on other videos you will see on your screen right now.